Good day and welcome to our quantitative methods class. In this video, you will be learning something methods more deeper because I know that when you, when you were in senior high school, you already learned about sampling methods. And this time in college, in quantitative methods, you will be learning it deeper because again, you will be having your research. And we all know that the sampling method is one of the important let's say, factors that we need to consider uh, to be accurate, okay, so that we can come up with a hypothesis, no? if we can prove the hypothesis or not, that is vital in um, many researches, okay, so let us start, these are our le le lecture objectives, you'll be differentiating population and sample, You'll be justifying why sampling is important and you will be classifying and naming some sampling techniques. Okay. Let us start this lesson with this idea. We have here scenario number one. Mrs. Cruz wants to do an analysis on students' final examination scores in her 40 grade 11 Baguio mathematics class. So this is Mrs. Cruz, a teacher of a certain section and then for her to be able to know the entire performance of the let's say entire class for that subject with uh, in this example mathematics she used the entire population to get that certain average well that is okay that is correct that is very accurate because she included all the population well here in the se uh, second scenario a group of researchers want to determine the average mathematics grade for the semester of grade 11 students in the Philippines. Okay, this is not a problem. A group of researchers cannot have a survey to all students in the Philippines, no grade 11 students in the Philippines. How can the researcher be able to come up with an accurate, let's say, hypothesis or uh, accurate results of his survey or his or her research that is when sampling methods came in but we need to be careful in choosing what sampling method are we going to use because again it really depends on the nature of the uh, let's say the data that you will be coll collecting or the nature of the population that you will be collecting that is what we call the population versus sample. So to illustrate it further, I know you are very much familiar with this already. Population, for example, you are a doctor and you want to identify or let's say you want to have a research on the, let's say, the diseases of the adults or the uh, aged, okay? And then since you have the entire population, for example, these are the number or these are the, the old women and men in a barangay and then since the doctor cannot have a survey for the entire barangay for a certain reason then he used this sampling method as you can see we you have um, equal number of types of let's say types of old men and old women let's say for example the green now green people are the old men while the red people are the old women while this blue people may be not so old um, men or women okay so the doctor was able to collect proportion no proportionate number of respondents for his or her research that is one way of having that sampling method Okay, that is how to illustrate the population and the sample. So again, population is the group you want to generalize, not the entire population. And out of that population, you can have that sample, just let's say a bit, no? so that you can, uh, you can know the ideas or let's say the uh, concepts of what are these population are trying to uh, tell us or what are the characteristics or attributes of this population represented in a sample so a good sample is one that is representative uh, representative of the entire population and it gives each thing an equal chance of being chosen 
So one thing that comes in my mind when we are talking about sampling is when you are mixing a coffee, for example, you uh, pour in the coffee powder, the sugar, the creamer, or if you want to add milk, you can add milk, uh, milk powder, and then you mix it all, mix it all, and then it can form a certain taste, okay, of a coffee with a cream, with a milk, and then with a sugar, and then you decided to not, no, to not, let's say, to not drink all, no, the mixture. You are just going to taste using a teaspoon, just a, just a, just a taste, no, of that, of the taste of that coffee, and that is an example of a good sampling uh, method, no. That is how we can um, metaphorically, um, let's say. Um, differentiate or let's say uh, think of a sampling method okay even if we cannot be able to taste all the coffee that you have mixed but still because of the good mixture you can taste it the same also with this idea in sampling method for example with the current events that is happening in this um, in our community in our nation for example, we already have the results, even if um, the, elect the election is not yet um, conducted, we have the survey results of the presidential uh, candidates, like Marcus is number one, Lenny is number two, and the rest no, follow. And then, um, we were able, uh, I mean the researchers were able to see the results, and then you might wonder why they already have the results when you were not uh, were not surveyed by them. So that is an example of sampling method. Even if wala pa election, then there is a result. And I don't know again if that result is you not know, is already accurate because they only uh, surveyed you now they only surveyed numbers of the population, not the entire population. So if you want to have a more accurate um, survey or research, you need to have the population. But again, because of the time, because of the effort, the money that we will be spending for surveying, then we cannot have it. So we are just going to have the sampling methods. So much to that one. Okay, again, we, um, we, we have the advantages and disadvantages of sampling method. So advantages are lesser costs. Uh, saves time, lighter effort, and disadvantages of sampling, as I've mentioned, occurrence of probable errors, possibility of bias. Okay, those are just the some characteristics of a sampling method as advantages and disadvantages. Okay, let us now proceed directly to the types of sampling method. Okay, we have two categories in sampling method you have probability sampling and non-probability sampling now in probability sampling it is a sampling technique which uses random process to obtain a sample we use the probability this time okay everyone has a chance to be you know, to be a respondent you no know, to be included in the sum uh, in the sample size while in the non-probability sampling this is more on the convenience of, let's say, of the researcher. Maybe uh, he or she is lacking a time, is lacking, uh, uh, let's say, lacking money. So he or she chose to have non-probability sampling. That could be in, in, let's say, in many cases. For example, you are having a survey for the performance of the, you know, you are going to know the performance of the principal, school principals in Toledo City. So that is non-probability sa sampling because non-teachers cannot be your respondents because the title of your research is Performance of the Principals in Toledo City. So that is, um, let's say, uh, maybe categorized as quota sampling or no, you intended to have that sample size or the, um, the respondents. Okay, let us know first the five no, examples of probability sampling. First is sam simple random sampling. Second is stratified random sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, and multi-stage random sampling. Let us learn all of these one by one. 
So this is some simple random sampling from the name itself. You can already say that this is um, done randomly and simply. Okay. Uh, for example, you have here the entire population in blue, and then you only selected maybe a um, couple of number or numbers of sample uh, respondents. Then you will have these uh, uh, these red popul uh, sample or people, for example. And then here we have from out of many number of populations, then you will have this sample, just a few, or let's say lesser than the population. Okay, you can do simple random sampling by having lottery method and use of table random numbers. How to do the lottery method? So again, you have this uh, example, simple random sampling. Okay, so the primitive way you now on how you are going to have the simple random sampling. So you have the list of all uh, the names of the pop entire population. Okay, for example, you are surveying the, uh, let's say, mathematics performance of crown solutions. Okay, and then you need to have a sampling method. So how are you going to do this? So uh, that is the primitive one. Okay, primitive one. You are go or let's say the... Uh, the traditional one. Now you are going to simply, okay, put all the names of the entire population. Maybe there are um, more or less one one thousand, um, let's say, students in Concentric College. Then you will have this simple random sampling. So you will be needing lots of papers to do it. Okay, but don't worry because you have Microsoft Excel and other softwares that um, you will know how to. Um, how to make your uh, sampling simple random sampling faster okay that is no a simple random sampling and then you decided to only choose six now for, for this example and then here you go there are uh, um, these people are now your respondents in your simple random sampling okay so out of the population you have that okay other forms of simple random sampling can be fishbowl method or again table of random numbers. So again, this is lottery method. You are familiar with this, like Lotto, Machiao, and many lottery games. Ayan. So you will be picking numbers out of that lottery method or using bowls. Okay. Here in simple random sampling, you are not going to decide by yourself on how many respondents that you will be selecting if you want to have an accurate um, let's say accurate research accurate results you are going to use the Slovens formula for example you have 25,000 high school students which which is the entire population of the uh, let's say of the students in Cebu City, for example, for example, so 25,000 students, and again because of the convenience, because of the time, the money, the effort that you will be exerting, you will be giving, then you need only the sample, and the best way to do that is to, you no, know, to have the Slobens formula. If you can remember this one, or this is new to you, so the formula is. N is equal to N over 1 plus N times E squared. Okay, and our E this time, no, the margin, margin of error is 0 0.05. Okay, this is commonly used, 0 0.05. This is when you are having social studies researches, but if you are going to have researches in manufacturing and many more, no other, uh, very accurate, then we'll be using 0 0.01, okay? But this time, we're going to have the standard, no? 0 0.05 squared. That is our value for margin of error. So substitute, you're just going to substitute it and then you can use the calculator to compute it, no? Like, for example, 25,000 divided by, let us solve first um, the denominator, the values in the denominator. So you have, okay, 1 plus 25,000, no, 25,000 times, use parenthesis, 
zero point zero five uh, squared this one and that is equal to sixty three point five so twenty five thousand divided by sixty three point five that is three hundred ninety three point seven and since this uh, we're talking about discrete variable or discrete data then we're going to make it a whole number okay round it off to whole number because we are talking about high school students we cannot have half of them okay so 394 students so that's it that is how you are going to find the um, the sample size okay Next is systematic sampling. Okay, systematic sampling is a method of sampling in which every k element from a, a complete li list. So this is a little bit systemat systematic. So let us know how to do it. First thing that you need to do is to again solve for the Slovens formula here. So in this example, we have okay, the population, the greater, I mean the the big n, which is equal to 2,000. Then the sample size is 500. How did we solve it? Using the Slovens formula. Okay. So how about this K? Now what is this K? This is the K term. How you are going to count for it? Okay. For example, you have um, this formula. The entire population divided by the desired sample size. So, 2,000 divided by sample size 500, that is equal to, what do you think? 2,000 divided by 500, that is 4. Therefore, every fourth element or every fourth um, datum no, will be part of the sample size. Okay, let us know how to do it. For example, okay, for example, let me use pen here for example you have the list of respondents here for, uh, again this is 2000 so maybe students in consulate Ricks college for example so you have the list here like maybe you can arrange it from kindergarten to college so for example you have here the name of Anna this is Anna you have Juan you have um, Cynthia or uh, Cynthia you have John, you have Apple, and so on. You have the list here. So in order for you to make it no to make it accurate, you use systematic random sampling. How did you do it? Um, we are just going to count from one to four because you have the K term here. So one, two, three, four. And then John is included. Next. For example, you have names here like Paolo. Um, Agustin, um, Esmeralda. Okay, continue the counting. So one, two, three, four. Therefore, Esmeralda is part of the sample size, or let's say the sum. Yeah, the sample size, which is five hundred, until you will complete your five hundred respondents. If you're going to do it manually, then you will take time, and then. On our next videos, uh, okay, you, you'll be learning how to do it in Microsoft uh, Excel, okay, in the next, next videos, okay. Uh, okay, so that's it. That is the systematic uh, random sampling. Okay, how about this random digits table? How are we going to use this? So random digits table, you can search it in go Google or you can use this one the one that I am presenting to you okay this is random digits table how to do it this is another way of systematic random sampling so how to do it for example you assign numbers to these respondents that you have you assign numbers and then you are going to count maybe you can start here from 19 okay hold on. okay we count here from 19, so 19 is now included, included, 22, can you have 22, yes, you can have 22, included 22, 
39. Do we have 39? No. So just leave it. Then 50. Do you have 50? No. Do you have 34? No. Uh, 0, 05. Yes, we have 0, 05. And then you will be needing 4. Huh? You will be needing 4. Sample size of 4. 75. You do not have 62. You do not have 87. You do not have 13. You have. Okay, therefore, your sample size is now complete, which is 4. So you have 0, 05, 19, 13, and 22. That is just no other way of doing it. No, doing this uh, systematic random sampling. How about the stratified random sampling? Okay, let us know this one. So from the, from the name, it's all stratified. It came from the word strata or stratum, uh, which means you are having that subsets, okay, or a subgroup out of that, let's say, category. Let us know how it, uh, how it is done. For example, you have the population here. It is scrambled, no categories. They can be elementary, um, junior high school, senior high school, college, or kindergarten. Uh, any, for this example. And then you will be needing six only. So, you have the strata. Okay, so you categorize them first. You group them first. Okay. And then... You will be picking equal, no equally. Since you will be needing six, then you will be needing two from each group. Ayan. And again, do not forget to use the Slovene formula to know the suggested sample size. But for your co convenience, when you are going to have research, the suggested lang is you will have 30 respondents. Okay, 30 respondents. We will not be you know, very... Let's say articulate about it because you, it will cost a lot of money when you are serving many respondents. So that's it. That is stratified random sampling. So another way of doing it is, again, you have the computation here. For example, you have 1,000 students. Okay, you have 1,000 students as the entire population of the CCTC, for example. 500 from grade school, 300 from junior high school. 200 from, from senior high school. And you will be needing 400 based on the Slovens formula, right? Okay. 400. How can you get, no? How can you know the number of students that you will be getting from the grade school, junior high school, and senior high school? So the formula is, okay, since you already have 400, no? Uh, you are going to divide 400 by 1,000. So this time you will be using N over... No, the small n over capital N. So, sample size divided by population. So, 400 divided by 1,000, that is 0 0.4. Therefore, you are going to get 40% per stratum or per category or per group. So, 40% of 500. So, how to get it? Multiply lang. You're going to multiply... 500 by 0 0.4 it will ha uh, it will be equal to 200 300 times 0 0.4 that is 120 200 times 0 0.4 that is 80 until you will have the total of 400 that is stratified random sampling just in case the the number of let's say the number of population per category is not equal okay this is stratified sampling example, another example. So you work for a small company of 1,000 people and want to find out how they are saving for retirement. We're going to use stratified random sampling to obtain your sample. The population will be divided in strata by age group. So you have here the bracket, for example. Now this is commonly used in researches. You have the, uh, the respondent's profile especially the age, specifically the age. So we have the bracket from 20 to 29 year old, 30 to 39 year old, and so on. And then total number of population in this strata. So that's, okay, that's it. And then how to do it? The same again, the same again. You will be, okay, in this case, you no, know, um, it is 714. So let me move, let me move my video. Okay. So we will now obtain the sample using the Slovens formula. 
uh, with 98% confidence level. So do not forget the margin of error which we used earlier which is 0 0.05. This time we will be using 0 0.02 because 98%, diba? 100 minus 98%, that is 0 0.02 or 2%. So use that one in our Slovens formula and you will have the equal of 700, 714 people. Okay, the same process that we did earlier, we divided 714 by 1,000. And let us see first what is the percentage times 1,000. That is, I know, hold on, 714 divided by 1,000. That is 71.4. You can multiply it by 100. That is 71.14%. Okay, or you can have the decimals like, 0 0.74 0 0.74 or um, yeah 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 let me do it again 714 divided by 1000 that is 0 0.714 thousands okay I 10 thousands so that's it you're going to multiply this percentage or decimal into the Number of population per stratum, number of population per stratum, stratum, and then you will have this. And then if you add this all, it will be equal to 740. Okay, that is just another example. Proceed to cluster sampling. What is this cluster sampling? This is somewhat related to stratified sampling, but now we have cluster and stratum. We will be knowing the difference of, the, uh, of these two. This is still grouping. Okay. Okay, with cluster sampling, the researcher divides the population into separate groups called clusters. Then a simple random sample of clusters is selected from the population. So the difference between cluster and stratified, in stratified, we selected all, no, we included all the bracket, all the group of people, no, all the groups of people here in grade school, junior high school, senior high school. But in cluster sampling, we are only choosing a group which will represent the entire population. For example, in the Philippines, using stratified sampling, you get sample size in every provinces. Province of Cebu, province of Manila, uh, province of Negros, province of... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. In many provinces, in, in all provinces in um, in the Philippines. While in cluster sampling, we are only choosing provinces. Like, I want to only have provinces in Visayas, Cebu, Negros, Bohol, Siquijor, and many more. So that is cluster sampling. It does not include the entire or all the stratum, all the groups. It only choose no. It only chooses. Um, groups like this in this example it does not include it. group two group three I hope you get the idea that is cluster sampling and then after that now you can do multi-stage sampling for example you have this um, group number four group number one and then how can you do it then you are going to um, apply again the okay the simple random sample of this you can do this here you can just pick maybe I can pick this one this one this one using the simple random sampling or you can do another let's say systematic random sampling or it depends on how you are go going to do it excuse me <coughs> okay so this is types of cluster sampling one stage cluster sampling of course when the researcher includes respondents or population from all the randomly selected clusters as sample. Okay, just like what I mentioned, we can have one stage cluster sampling, again, provinces in Philippines, and then you chose Cebu, then the entire population of Cebu City, then that is an example of one stage. And again, no, um, what, that is one stage sampling. Okay, this is another example. We have the population, per municipality and you only chose this 
provinces or let's say it's a city so it's a city in Davao Davao uh, Davao province I think so Davao the North Northy provinces okay. uh, province so you have municipality of Asuncion or city of Kapalong and so on and then out of these you will be doing another you no know, sample size this is two-stage cluster sampling you did the cluster sampling now this is one stage all of these are included already okay in one stage but in two stage out of these you will still be needing Slobin's formula and then you can choose either you have the systematic or the simple random sampling that is two stage cluster sampling if you really want to get a perfect you know um, let's say perfect way of sampling that is again multi-stage sampling okay so this is how you illustrate it again you have group one two and three and you chose only the group number one okay eliminate group two and three you have group number one only and again you're going to do simple random sampling and that's it now you will be knowing it and another another category in sampling is non-probability sampling we're almost done you have the convenience sampling purposive sampling quota sampling and snowball sampling okay. snowball sampling Hold on. okay um, in convenience sampling, okay, it involves collecting a sample from somewhere near or convenient to the researcher. For example, you are studying about, uh, let's say, you have a local business. Uh, for example, you have a business like milk tea. Now that you, you own a milk tea, that is your first branch of having it. And then for you to know the satisfaction level of the customers, you only pick randomly no, or conveniently, like your friends, like your mama, your papa, your maybe your, um, your workmates in school, classmates before. That is convenient sampling. Convenient sampling. Convenience to you. Convenient to you. No home you can call that fast. Like, Hey, can you can you answer my survey if you are satisfied with my services here or my uh, quality of my other uh, products that I am selling? That's convenient sampling. We are convenient. Right? Purposive sampling. This is what I am talking about earlier about the principle. No, if your study is focusing on the principle, then you will be having that purpose of selecting principles. Like if you have, let's say. You have only respondents of um, IT students, then that could be no purposive, purposive sampling because your title is maybe um, satisfaction of let's say you you have your prototype or your own IT um, product then you'll have survey satisfaction of. This IT one A and one B um, of the product that I uh, I invented. So that is purposive sampling. Quota sampling. Now the population is grouped into mutually exclusive subsets. Then non-random selection of elements proportionate to the size of each group is taken as sample. This is somewhat the same with the cluster sampling. So again, you have the population. It is group into mutually exclusive subsets now from the name itself quota now just to just to comply now the desired amount of uh, let's say number of uh, number of respondents for example you are in senior high school now when you are in senior high school you will only be needing 30 respondents for your research i think that is the standard here in cctc and then in a group like stem 1 stem 2 abm and then for you to just simply complete all the respondents, number of respondents, you will be needing quota sampling lang. That could, can be sort of some sort of convenience sampling. Well, snowball sampling is commonly used when 
someone is promoting no, someone is promoting um, I don't know if I have space here okay so let me use a pen so snowball sampling is when you are it is just like marketing you are serving for example for example you started the survey he asked your two friends can you see this moving huh? moving laser you started to survey your two friends and then sorry for the background noise um, you started to, you to have sorry for the background noise okay so you have these um, two friends of yours and then you decided to have survey, have survey of them and then for you to be convenient then you ask them to you know, to have more respondents then your friend recruited another another and then the other friend recruited another another friend of your friend recruited another and your friend and the friend of the friend of your friend and so on and so on that is what we call snowball sampling because the same with the idea like snowball about when you have this mountainous part in countries and I snow like if you have snow here when the snow rolls it becomes bigger right? because it is added with with the no, with the with the snow no? At, as it falls down it becomes bigger and that is the idea of snowball sampling just in case you miss that uh, that term you know okay that's it those are just the uh, sampling methods that um, that you need to familiarize yourselves with because again the heart of uh, research is the sampling method and how you interpret it so the first now the first way or the first step in conducting a research is to really come up with a good sampling method so that you will have an accurate research that's it and thank you so much for watching this video i hope um, you will you will answer the activities that i posted um, on your google classroom thank you so much and good day